Hello everyone, David A. Cox here with PCClassesOnline.com and today we are going to be talking about Google Chrome, the web browser, but today we're going to be doing a video on Chrome for Mac. We've already done a video on Chrome for Windows, so should you be viewing this and you mean to be watching the Windows version, you're on the wrong video. So make sure you go back to the video library on our website at PCClassesOnline.com and look for the Windows version. So the reason why I wanted to do a class on Google Chrome is it has come up in conversation in past classes, specifically when we're usually talking about our new to Mac class or our new to Windows class. At some point, inevitably, we get to the built-in web browser. Now on the Mac, it comes pre-installed with Safari, Windows comes pre-installed with Internet Explorer, but both of them just don't have the same kind of features and reliability that Google Chrome has shown me at least. So I want to show you how to get it, how to install it, and some of its key features and a few bonus items too. So the way you get it is go to chrome.google.com. Should you be uh, viewing this video via our YouTube page, there is a link in the description. And if you're viewing it on our website, same thing, it's in the video description. So all you do is click here where it says download Chrome and I'm going to show you where that file actually goes. If you open up Finder on your Mac, that's the little happy Mac icon at the bottom left, go into your Downloads folder and you'll see it right here, Google Chrome.dmg. Double click on it. If you want, you can skip this next little screen here. Um, and th this is the big part that I wanted to show people because I've encountered this with a few clients. Here you have the Google Chrome logo, there's an arrow, and then this here is the Applications folder. Notice that the little A is the same A that you see over here. The way you install any disk image, that's what this technically is, it's sort of like your computer thinks there's a CD. What you do is it wants you to drag this from here to here. So you drag and drop it in. I've already done that, so I'm going to skip that step. And when you open Google Chrome, this is how it looks. So what I want to do is go over uh, some of the different settings, uh, the different buttons, and show you how to customize a few of its features. So up here at the very top left, we have, of course, a back arrow to go back to the previous page, a forward arrow to go to the next page. If you're not familiar with this particular symbol, this is the universal symbol for refresh. So let's say you're on eBay and you have a bid that is about to expire. If you hit that button or command R, that's the hot key way to do it, it will refresh the page. This little house icon that you see here will take you to your home page. Now, when you first install Google Chrome, that will not be there, but I'm going to show you how to add it later on. This right here, of course, is your address bar. This is where you can type in any website. A uh, little quick fact, because not all of our clients know this, you don't ever need to use www. You can just type in the website .com, .org, .net, whatever it is, and hit the return key. The other thing that's nice about this is this is also Google. So let's say I want to search for something, maybe Italian restaurants in my area. I can just type in Italian restaurants, okay, and it will search for Italian restaurants where I am. Okay. Next, over here on the right-hand side, you're going to see a bunch of icons that many of you won't have because these are what we call extensions that I have added into Google Chrome. But the one that you will see here is the little star. And that star is how you bookmark. Now, there's another way that you can do it, which is a little bit faster. If you uh, hold Command and tap the letter D as in David, that's the other way to do it. So let's say I go to cnn.com and I want to bookmark it okay so the way I would do this is hit command D or click on that little star actually I already have it bookmarked but we'll pretend that I don't now when you do that you can save it to different locations okay the most popular one is the bookmark bar and that is right here it's at the top of the screen underneath the website address bar so you can put as many as you want up there but sometimes you may find that you want to group them together, sort of like what you can see here that I have done. So if I, let's get out of that. If I go here under tools, for example, I have bookmarked a few different websites that have various tech tools that I use occasionally. So if you want to group them together, here is how you create a folder within your bookmark bar. All you're going to do is secondary click in an open gray space. And the way you secondary click, in case you didn't know, 
is if you have a laptop, you're going to click with two fingers present on your trackpad, or you can hold the control key and click, or if you're on a desktop, you can right click if you have that feature enabled. When you do that, you'll see here that one of the options is add folder. Just simply click on that, type in whatever you want the name of the folder to be. Let's call it news2 since I already have one called news. And now anything I want to drag into that folder, I just drag and drop. So if I want to take CNN and put it in there, I just drag, drop, and it's now inside of it. Just like that. If you ever want to delete a bookmark, again, secondary click on it, and one of the options is delete. And it gives you a little poof noise too. Over here on the right hand side, we have these three little lines here. Okay, this uh, gives you a bunch of the different options. There is another way to access this. This part here actually does look the same as it does on Windows. Um, a lot of Mac users are going to by default go to where it says Chrome and go to Preferences. It's the same thing as going over here to these three lines and going into Settings. It takes you to the same place. Now, before we actually go into the settings, I do want to go over a few of these things here. For example, a new tab. One of the things that's nice when you're browsing the web is sometimes you want to have access to more than one website at a time. So maybe I want Facebook running in the background, I want Pandora open for music, and uh, maybe YouTube in the background. So the way you can do this is either click this little tab that you see right here, or if you prefer the hot key way, it's Command and the letter T. And that'll open up a new tab. Now in this case, you see this screen. This is actually an extension that I use with Google Chrome. I'll go over it with you in a little bit, but uh, for some of you, it's going to be your home page. For others of you, it could just be a, um, a Google page. So now I can type in whatever website I want to go to. Let's say I want to go to Fiverr. So now that I have my second website open, I can click over here and go to CNN. I click here, it goes to Fiverr, and I could add as many tabs as I want. Just know that if you start to get really crazy with this, if you start accumulating like 20 tabs, it is going to slow down your computer and your internet connection just because inevitably there are things that are loading in the background. So try not to get too, too nuts with tabs. I have a couple clients who like to have about 50 of them open at the same time and then wonder why their computer moves at the speed of dark. So that's tabs. Over here, the other things we can do is create a new window. If you want to have a completely separate browser window to do your thing, you can see over here the hotkey for that is Command N, as in Nancy. Um, let's see here. We have a zoom option here, which is really just for this page, but I want to show you how to universally change the zoom on every website. I'll go over that in just a little bit. A couple other features here that I don't think many of you are going to commonly use, but of course we do have print, command P, as it always is. Uh, you can go into your download history here, and then of course settings. So let's go into settings and take a look at them. So over here, right at the top, it says, what do you want it to do upon startup? Okay, you can have it continue where you left off here. Sorry, let's start at the beginning. You can have it start with opening a new tab page. So in my case, that would look like that. Okay, option two, continue where I left off, or you can specify where it goes to. Um, I mentioned this in the Windows version of this class. If you suddenly start using Chrome and you notice that your homepage has changed, this doesn't really happen on the Mac, but on the PC it does a lot. It, you have these different apps that will change your homepage. So just click here and change the URL, or actually just delete it, and then enter in a new one. And that way it'll load to whatever website you want. Most people who have a homepage use either Google.com, Facebook, or whatever their preferred news source is. Below that we have appearance, uh, so you can have different themes to give Chrome a different look. It's not really necessary, it's purely cosmetic, but you can do that if you want. Right here is where you check to add the home button. I, I recommend it, especially if you do use a homepage that you would frequent often like Google or Facebook. Moving down further, uh, we have different search options. If you don't like Google, you can always change it to Yahoo, Bing, Ask, or God forbid, AO hell. Moving on further, not many people use multiple users on Google Chrome, but you can. The reason why not many people do is because most people who would theoretically use that have a different user account on their computer. So none of those settings come over. So you could do that if you wanted. Then down here we have advanced settings. 
And there's really one feature here more than any that I want to go over, which is here where it says passwords and forms. So sometimes I work with people and discover that they don't know any of their own passwords. And many of them think they don't have a password. Well, you do. If you didn't, then anyone could access your data. The thing is, is that your computer stores that data. And this is where Chrome stores it, right here, where it says Manage Saved Passwords. I would show you mine, but I'd be crazy, so I'm not going to do that. If we go down a little bit further, this is where I was referring to just a moment ago, where you can change the size of all web content, and you can do it either by zooming in on every page right here, or you can change just the text. So if you want to make just the fonts a little bit bigger, you can do that across the whole web. And nothing else here is going to be of particular importance to most of you. You can change the location of your downloads, but most of these other features most of you will not care about. Now let's talk a little bit about extensions, and then we're going to talk briefly about apps. Here in extensions is where you can go to add different features to your web browser. So let me give you an example. Uh, two of my favorites that I use, you see some here that I have that I don't really use, are Coupons Helper and Invisible Hand. Invisible Hand, more than anything, is a really great extension. Uh, here's my example. Two days ago, I was buying a new widescreen HD TV. And I went on Amazon.com to look for one, found a great set, had all the key features that I cared about. And then, because I was on a product, Invisible Hand launched in the background. And it gave me a little pop-up at the top of the window. And it said, found this product for a lower price. And so then I clicked on it, and it took me to another website which had the same TV, brand new, for $300 less. How many times does that ever happen on Amazon.com? So I went to that website, and just as I was about to buy it for $300 less, Coupon Helper launched, and it discovered that there was a coupon code for $10 off. So I saved a lot of money just by using these two extensions. Now the difference between an extension and an app is an extension has to do with the web. An app usually has something to do with a program. It's, a, it's sort of like an app that would function on an iPad, as an example. So let's go over the various apps out there. To get there, click on where it says apps at the top left. That's going to first take you to the apps that you currently have. And by default, it comes with most of the ones that you see here on the top and bottom row. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them. To get more, go down here to the bottom right of your screen where it says web store. And that will launch where you can buy apps. Now, most of these apps are free almost all of them. I think I've only bought one ever. And they range from anything from games where you can play Angry Birds, if you're still into that, to all sorts of different great things for business. Let me give you a couple examples. I like going here to Collections for your desktop or Popular. Let's actually go Popular. So, for example, Spotify. Uh, we've done classes on Spotify. It's a way to listen to music for free. You can have that run right in Chrome. I mentioned Angry Birds for those of you who might like to have a game or two on your computer. The Weather Channel has an app that you can build right into Chrome. Uh, there's uh, inserts for Dropbox and Google Drive. Google Drive uh, right now is actually a little bit better, in my opinion, than Dropbox, purely based on the fact that they do give you more storage. And you can browse through these at your own pace, and to install them, it is as easy as, let's do this one. You click here where it says free. It says, sign in, please. So I sign in. And it just says, do you want to add it? And when you click Add, that's it. I'm going to hit Cancel because I'm not really a gamer. Anyways, I hope you'll check out Google Chrome. It really is the best web browser out there. The other thing I do want to say um, before we go, two, two quick things. One of the features I love about it is that it syncs automatically. So if you have Chrome on multiple computers, all of those stored passwords, you only have to do it once it'll pick right back up where it left off. If I bookmark a page on my desktop and then I go on my laptop, that bookmark is already there because it auto syncs. Um, and the other final feature is that sometimes you may have in the past been on a website like YouTube or PCClassesOnline.com and you go to play a video and you get a pop-up that says your Flash player is out of date. For those of you who don't know, Flash has to do with video and sometimes animation on the web. And it periodically does need to be updated. 
The nice feature of using Chrome is that Flash is embedded within the actual browser. So unlike other services out there like Internet Explorer and Safari, you don't ever have to update it. It will auto update and within that update it will also update Flash. So it's really easy to use. Hope you'll check it out. If you've never been to our website before, please do give us a shot. A shot. Uh, we are a completely free service on the web, pcclassesonline.com. We currently have members in 160 countries, and please tell your friends. Finally, if you're watching this video on YouTube, we really, really appreciate it if you click the little subscribe button at the top left and give us a little like. Thank you so much, everyone. This is David A. Cox with pcclassesonline.com, and you all have a wonderful day. Take care.